Okay, here we have three vectors, v, u, and w. And so far we've looked at vectors with two components, and when we were graphing them or, or thinking about them visually, we thought about them in the plane, in two dimensions. When we had a vector with three components, we graphed this in three dimensions. And in fact, we even labeled, uh, well, let me use a different color there. We even labeled this as the x, y, and z component, corresponding to the x, y, y and z axes. When we go to higher dimensions, dimensions greater than 3, so here we have a vector w um, with n dimensions. Let's say, for example, that n is 4. So this vector has four components. Now we, we don't try and graph this anymore. Anytime a vector has more than three components, we really, we can't graph it, we can't visualize it. We don't have a good way to graph four or five or six dimensions. But the beauty of linear algebra and the power of linear algebra is the fact that we can take what we know from here and from here, for that matter, and we can push those concepts to higher dimensions, to four dimensions, five dimensions, a hundred dimensions, a thousand dimensions. You know, we don't have to graph things, but the tools that we've created are um, will still apply. Okay. So let's talk about some things, some, some technical details here. One is the fact that vectors are ordered lists of numbers. They're ordered lists of components, right? First, th this vector has the component v1, and then it has v2. We already talked about the order, how the order matters. Well, that means that v is what's called a two-tuple. And a tuple is nothing more than an ordered list of elements. V is an ordered list of real numbers, an ordered list of components. So V is a two-tuple. It's a two-tuple because there's two of them. Just like U is a three-tuple, it's an ordered list of three components. And W is an n-tuple. It's an ordered list of n components. Okay, now we have the, the tools for talking about the definition of Rn. And Rn is really just the set of all n tuples of real numbers. So for example, if you have a vector with two components, That is an element of R2. Because R2 is the set of all two tuples, all two tuples, well, V is just one of those two tuples. So V must be in R2. And R2, we can loosely think of it as this plane. I mean, we haven't defined what a dimension is, but we can think of it as the two-dimensional plane. So this is R2. Just like U is an element of R3. R3 is all three tuples of real numbers, and U just happens to be one of those three tuples of real numbers. So U is in, is in R3. And R3 we can think of as the three dimensions, or three dimensions. And again, we haven't formally defined dimension, but uh, we can think of it like that. W 
similar to the rest, is an element of Rn. It has uh, Rn is the set of all n tuples of real numbers. W is an n tuple of real numbers, so it's an, it's in Rn. W is an element of Rn. Okay, so I know this is a lot all at once, but really what's important here is this notation. To me, that's what's important. This is going to come up all the time. We're going to use it throughout the rest of the course. And if it helps you remember, just remember that the number up here is going to be the same as the number of components. So we can read this if we want. Um, instead of v is an element of R2, we could just read this as v is a vector with two components. u is a vector with three components. w is a vector with n components. Okay, so I just wanted to lay this out there so that we're all on the same page and we'll move from here. See you then. Oh, also, um, it, we'll, we'll expand upon this idea of, of w, or, or sorry, of a vector in Rn, how we can work with that and, and abstract some of the ideas that we learned in two and three dimensions. Okay, see you then.